Good evening, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? Is that clear? Okay, so let's start with the opening slide. A picture speaks a thousand words, and in the long time that I've been studying markets and most recently trading psychology, uh, the psychology side of what we do, behavioral technical analysis, is very important. I'm just going to just check for the slide to appear, just one moment. So I'm excited to be here for two reasons. One, this is a follow-up session with IG Bank. Thank you, Mr. Fahed and, and Philippe, somewhere roaming around, uh, to a workshop that I did last November. I think some of the students that were attending that workshop are here today, so welcome to you. Uh, the second reason is the subject. Of course, we're still talking about achieving trading mastery, which, which is why I included the Swiss mountain in the background. I used to live in Switzerland, and. One of the things I loved most about this country is the landscape. But mountains really give this idea of mastery, something beautiful that we can admire, but also something that we need to consider in terms of how we can achieve something as beautiful, uh, both in nature but also in our own disciplines. And of course, we're all here to learn about trading and investing. Now, in my trading experience, the most important part of it has been making mistakes. So I'll be raising my hand straight from the beginning and let you know that despite whatever you might be imagining in your mind and in your heart when you listen to me speak, please know that I've probably made all the mistakes you can imagine, <laughs> which allowed me to really uh, learn what works for me and what doesn't. Now, before we dive into the, the session and the presentation itself, every destination begins with a roadmap. And that's at the heart of, of this training I'm doing uh, with IG in association with Aichi. And it begins, the proposal I make to you is this idea of us being in a peak performance state. It's an athletic term. And I'd like to use metaphors from high intensity uh, disciplines like athletics because trading and investing is intense. Does everyone agree with me? Uh, there's nothing about trading or investing that isn't intense, that isn't high pressure. So there are a lot of good overlays with um, athletics. Now, if we think about the peak performance, that's, the, that's what we need to achieve. But essentially, to do that, we need to understand what it is. I describe it as a balance between mind, body, and emotional balance. Now, I will get technical and geeky for those of you who want to hear more about strategies and hear about some of th those mistakes in a more objective way. But I do think it's also important to address this first. Now, as part of the peak performance, we want to be aware of the, the mistakes that we're making. As part of that awareness, I've always divided it into two areas. First area is nature, things that we are born with. Sometimes it's a family heritage. It, often it's a quality of, of some sort in our, in our heritage. It's a biology. But then we also have nurture. This is an environmental experience. This is something that happens when we're raised by our, by our family, the schools that we go to, the friends that we associate with, and ultimately, the, the life that we live influences us. Do we all agree? Nature, nurture, these are key, key influences to us as human beings. And of course, if it influences us as human beings, then it would naturally influence us as traders and investors. On the nature side, we're talking about survival instincts, because ultimately, uh, we have this ancient computer program in our head. Some people call it the lizard brain. But essentially, it's, it's what keeps us alive, what keeps us evolving. And it, it's what gets triggered when we're trading, especially if we're losing money. That is sometimes amplified by the personality that we have. And everyone has a different personality. I'm looking at the audience here. There's a nice mosaic of different people, different genders, different age groups, different experiences, different markets that you all trade. So this fits in with your personality. On the other side, when we talk about nurture, things that we pick up from the environment that we live in, it's more to do with beliefs and values. What are your beliefs? What are your values? This really does come out into the trading floor, I promise you. I work with traders quite regularly in London as part of a college and as part of the, own tr the training I do uh, myself. And this comes up time and time again. Now, just to be more specific, when I say beliefs and values, I mean 
beliefs and values about trading. What do you think about trading? Do you think good thoughts? Do you think negative thoughts? Why? What about risk? Everyone has a different philosophy on risk. <laughs> and money, more so. We all have a different relationship with money. And of course, the, the end of this game is all to do with money. So it matters from a nurture perspective what we think about all of this. Now, the idea, once we gain awareness, the red zone that you can see there, then we can start to focus on change. How can we change something we're not aware of? How can we change something that we're not aware of? So step one is always awareness. And it takes time, especially for a lot of first-time traders, to become aware. Awareness is a lifetime process. I'm still discovering new, new areas of self-awareness as a trader, as an investor. But at the very beginning, this is the starting point. Most people think it's learning about many different indicators, and you will do later on with the feature session with John Bollinger, and of course the, the session before that with Chris Dawson Gregoire. But you do really need to do a self-analysis of yourself in order to change, and then ultimately to sustain that change and be that change, we're talking about transformation. Now, the way that I connect the dots, especially in this day and age, when we have technology on our side, and there are more ways that we can quantify data and actually measure the progress of ourselves as human beings, as traders and investors, the two areas which I'm really big on are neuroscience, but science in general. There's so much really good, prolific research out there. Pick, the, pick a well-known, credible university, whether it's MIT University in the States, or whether it's various other places in Switzerland or, or elsewhere, there's lots of good research out there about our human decision-making process. We really need to learn more about this subject. Uh, there is no longer a time when we can be ignorant. Ignorance is actually a choice. And I say that with respect. Ignorance is now a choice. If you want to learn more about anything, especially self-analysis as a trader or investor, the information is there. Um, and I'm happy to give more references as this presentation goes on, or maybe in the Q&A session at the end. Now, as part of the flip side of the science, the experiential part, which is really important, is this whole idea of mindfulness. Now, I use this word very carefully because mindfulness means different things to different people. It's become a buzzword in the last few years. Uh, for some time, it was a, a taboo word. It was what we call in the, in the UK or in the US a, a woo-woo statement. It was too abstract. It was too spiritual. What does that mean? What's it got to do with trading and investing? But just think of mindfulness as mind emptiness. Because it's such a high-stress environment that we're in when we're trading and investing, we need to actually empty our minds from all the noise. The noise of losing money, the noise of developing a trading plan, the noise of the news alone. <laughs> we need to empty our minds in order for us to be in a trading zone. So the two tools that I use to connect the dots between awareness, change, and transformation, neuroscience and mindfulness. And ultimately, that gives the system the roadmap uh, in order to achieve each of those steps. Now, here's the big problem, and this is the topic of, of my presentation today. Part of the reason why I'm excited to be delivering it, because it's such an important area. What stops traders from the path of change and transformation? Because, of course, if it was that simple, we'd all be successful traders, and there would be no need to listen to me right now. And it's mistake. The mistakes, which is the textbook definition of a mistake, an act or judgment that is misguided or wrong. Now, there are many different ways we can refer to mistakes. It's an error, it's a fault, it's an inaccuracy. Call it what you will. A mistake is a mistake. Now, what's more important about the mistake is how we react to it. It actually doesn't make a difference how many mistakes you make in life or in markets. Obviously, the less mistakes, the better. But what's more important is what you do after you've made the mistake. What lesson have you learned? And when I had this conversation with a few industry colleagues before this session yesterday when I was in London, uh, quite a few people, I said, you know, what, what's your perspective about the culture of mistakes? And I got so many different responses. I had one media um, interviewer who, who works at IG in London who said to me that from a parent perspective, our children really have cultural issues when it comes to making mistakes. They have to pass the exams. If they don't do well, the pressure is so high. The competition is really, really intense. 
And so from a very young age, it's not a good experience to make a mistake. And as traders, we can all imagine the metaphor turned into a literal explanation. How many people enjoy making a mistake? I promise you, my first trade in the market, I did not enjoy making the mistake. But I learned over time, it was a stepping stone to my learning and to my growth. So I want you to think about the culture of mistakes. What culture do you live in when it comes to making mistakes? Whether it's at home, whether it's uh, at, at work, what's the work culture? Whether it's a regional culture here in Switzerland or internationally, what is the culture of mistakes? Does it encourage you to, to see the positive to making mistakes and to learning and growing, or does it not? All of this is going to be reflected in your trade performance. Now, quick opening engagement with the audience. I don't want any of you to fall asleep. Um, it's still early for that. How many of you have made a trading mistake? How many want to be really honest? Just raise your hands up high. I want you to be proud. I made a mistake. Come on. Keep your hands up. <laughs> okay. Keep your arms up, keep your hands up, if you learned, the, you learned the lesson from the mistake. Keep your hands up. Now, I want all of you to look around the room. These are all the people that have made mistakes and they've learned from the mistake. Isn't that wonderful? Often in trading, a lot of people say that it's a lonely, lonely discipline, and it is. <laughs> You're sitting behind the trading desk watching Euro dollar go up and down as it has been sideways for a long time. It's, it can be boring, and it can be very lonely. Uh, but it's very important to, you, to let you know that there's a trading community out there. Of course, on the IG platform, uh, they, they do events like this, where you can actually connect with each other and share ideas learn from each other, learn from the speakers, but also from each other. But know that you're not alone. Know that we all make mistakes. And what's great, I think most of you, 90% of you, are trying to look for the 10% that didn't raise their hands. 90% uh, of you, the majority, made mistakes and learned from them, which is great. So we're already starting on a positive note. Now, I want to let you know that you're in good company. And I say that with a little bit of hesitation. 2018 gives us the context of a tale of volatility and mistakes. 2018, I've been really big on this, and you may have seen some of my work on IGTV or just general uh, social media posts that I send out. Last year, 2018, was the reawakening of volatility. And not only did it reshape the cycle of the market, it also reshaped our psychology as traders and investors. And so the one message I want to contextualize for today's session, my presentation on mistakes and trading, before we dive into what those mistakes are, this is the time to really get up close and personal to your mistakes. Because the market volatility now is really going to test your nerves. This year, volatility will continue. That's my educated prediction for 2019 and beyond. And as a trader, as an investor, you're really going to need to focus on that self-development and that awareness so that you can uh, improve your performance or, at the very least, improve your risk and money management. Now, if we look at what happened in 2018, that's the section there in red. We had the volatility margin call, the first big spike that happened in, uh, in Q1 of last year. So that's the famous February uh, flash crash. Those of you who trade the US markets, you know that the Dow Jones sold off 1,600 points in 15 minutes. Crazy. It's not humanly possible. Probably algo traders, which own a big part of the volume, would have triggered that. But who cares? At the end of the day, that was a big, big shock move. And then that was later on followed by a second echo move, which is what I've called Top of the Pops, which is a, a, a music program that used to be famous a long time ago. But essentially, anything that was popular, anything that was sexy in terms of trend-following stocks, anything that moved and made you money. Momentum stocks, like technology stocks, like the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Amazon, all of these stocks, and I don't want to single out any stocks, there are good stocks, um, and there are times that we just have to maybe take a step away from them, but my point is, all of the things that we knew to, to, to be good and to make money crashed very quickly. And that was the environment. And the lesson from that is that nothing is certain. 
we have to accept the fact that markets are uncertain and that we live in a world of probability. And psychologically, that's important when we think about mistakes. Now, of course, if you look at it objectively, you can take a step back and do basic behavioral technical analysis and look at uh, the, the patterns, the patterns in the crowd psychology. So you can see their volatility compressing and then breaking up second time and third time. This is an up-to-date chart, so you can see there uh, we've blipped up again, so we'll see what happens next. But essentially, uncertainty and dealing with that new volatile environment is, is the key message there. Now, I want to emphasize this point by a quote of many uh, by Warren Buffett, the world-famous investor, and he has very nice quotes. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. That sounds funny, sounds crude, but I put it to you. In this year and the years to come, how many of you think that you've been swimming naked? Now, when I say that, <laughs> let me try and be more respectful. <laughs> what I mean by that is, swimming naked basically means making a really big mistake that's going to cost you money. So, trading without a trading plan, big mistake. Uh, trading without a stop loss or, or a measured risk management, big mistake. These are big mistakes. And ultimately, when the tide goes out and volatility comes in, that's when we're going to have to really start to reevaluate our strategy and our mindset. So I really hope that you remember these, these uh, seeds that I'm planting uh, educationally so that you can remember this for weeks and months to come, because this hopefully will be a lesson uh, for that time frame and longer. Now, the, the real issue with mistakes is what we do in terms of past, present, and future. And so, one of the things I've learned through my own development, but also through working with other traders, is this idea of what we do with the mistake itself. How do we react to the mistake? And most people hang on to the mistake, and they live in the past. A neuroscientist told me that the number of thoughts we think about in one day averages 60,000 thoughts a day. Guess how many of those thoughts are yesterday's thoughts? Anyone want to guess? How many people say 50%? Anyone say more than 50%? 60? 70? Trying to get a bidding war going on here. <laughs> 80%? 90% is the answer. 90% of the 60,000 thoughts that we think about every day was played back yesterday. So we're watching a, a, an out-of-date movie in our head every single day. So the question is, when we make a mistake, what, you know, how many times are we playing that movie and just living in the past? The solution is to learn from the mistake, take action, and learn about the power of now. What can we do? What lessons can we learn? What actions can we take now, the power of now thinking, after the famous book, in order to change the future? And I'm going to show you a laundry list of different mistakes, general mistakes and behavioral mistakes, but that's the fundamental point I want to uh, leave with you. What we do with this mistake matters more than the mistake itself. If you can take that away, then you've probably taken the best part of my presentation already. Now, I like to uh, look outside of the industry for inspirational quotes, and you, I've already told you that uh, athletes are a good example because uh, they dedicate their entire life to, to, to being the best that they can be. Uh, most of you, hopefully, will remember Michael Jordan. <laughs> he's a little bit dated now, but he's still is and was one of the world's top basketball players, but ultimately one of the best athletes out there. And a big part of my approach is to learn from these people. Success leaves blueprints. Success leaves blueprints, especially in the high-intensity areas. So let's learn from Michael Jordan. What did he say that was so impressive, which is why I decided to put him in the presentation? I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning, shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again. And that is why I succeed. So it's a pretty, pretty depressing statement. And yet he's one of the world's top basketball players. So what's going on in his head? And ultimately, He's not proud of making all of these mistakes. I mean, I haven't spoken to him, so I don't know. But, but I think more specifically, the lesson then, you can think to yourself, as I'm sharing with you my perspective, think to yourself, what do you think he meant by that? What I think is, he's teaching you 
about a success isn't all, all what it looks like on the outside, it's actually what you do on the inside that matters more. But the other thing is the amount of failures, the amount of mistakes that most high performance traders, investors, but also athletes go through in order to be successful. That's actually what counts. And if you ask people their story, that's usually what you get, some crisis story which actually allowed them to really excel and be the best that they can be. And that's very true in trading. So it's this idea of failing forward. There's a book, uh, a well-known book called Failing Forward. It's making a mistake. You've probably seen me hit this table a few times. I'm going to have to step away. That's me having my moment. But essentially, I'm learning from that. Now I'm going to step away from the, from the, from the table so I don't annoy you for the rest of the presentation. <laughs> but the point is, it's failing forward. If you fall over, get back up and carry on moving forward. Momentum is the most important action that you need to take when you make a mistake. Now, I want to focus on what trading mistakes each of you have made. And there's a big audience here, so there's only so much I can, I can do in terms of time and in terms of interactivity. Uh, but just keep in mind, think to yourself now, because I'm going to ask the question in a moment or two, what trading mistakes have you made? There are three types of trading mistakes. The first one is a behavioral trading mistake. The second half of this presentation, which I'll go through uh, in a at a reasonable speed, focuses only on behavioral mistakes. And that's the topic of the presentation. Second is strategy mistakes. And third is any mistake that's to do with risk or money management. OK, so I'm going to be bold and step down. If I can get a show of hands, how many of you have experienced being too emotional? Come on, you're in a safe space, I promise. <laughs> be honest. Honesty is your best friend. Honesty and humility as a trader. OK. Too emotional, so you've expressed the different emotions of fear, greed, but also, how has that affected your trading? Has it led to an emotional entry? You've pulled the trigger too quickly? What did that emotional uh, drive actually do? What was, that was the cause, what was the effect? How many of you have traded with no trading plan? Okay. It's quite empowering to see people kind of stand together <laughs> um, with, this, with this good acknowledgement of, of what was wrong and, and obviously what they need to do to fix it. The answer to that point is on the board. I've given you the answer. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now, how many of you have actually had a plan, but you haven't followed the plan? So you've actually gone to the effort of developing a plan. You spent the time, stayed up really late at night time. I know the feeling, trust me. <laughs> we go through our own journeys in life. You've, you've, really, you've read the book, you've attended the course, you've done everything, but you haven't followed it. Raise your hands again. I want to smile at all of you. <laughs> okay, I know the feeling. This is an interesting one, and this is probably more a new trend in the market in the last few years. Over-dependence on external sources. That, that's, that's my... That's my title for it. But essentially what that means is you're depending too much, and you might not realize this at the beginning, but you, you're depending too much on some external reference for why you're trading. So that might be uh, a market analyst. Maybe you saw one of my interviews or someone else, um, and you decided, ah, he said something about gold. He said something about Bitcoin. I'm going to do what he says. And I'm not saying, <laughs> if you think it's good advice, don't take it. I'm saying make sure it goes through your own filtering mechanism. Make sure, as I say here, that you find your own light first. It's very important that you have your own GPS system going on inside of you. Otherwise, you'll be all over the place. You'll be hearing what Ron said, what XYZ said, and not just what XYZ said, in terms of different people in the market, you'll be also maybe doing automated trading strategies without actually being objective when that trading strategy is not, no longer working for you. So black box systematic trading, people make money no matter what strategies they do. I know systematic traders that make money, I know discretionary traders that make money. My point is, is that information going through your filtering system? Do you have a GPS system that tells you this isn't working for me anymore, or do you not? So, Find your own light, avoid getting burnt by someone else's light, 
And if you want to listen to someone's opinion, or you want to follow an automated trading strategy, make sure that it's going through your own filtering system. That's the only thing I'm saying here. So we have two more to go. Excessive losses. How many people have experienced excessive losses? Not just losses, but excessive losses. Okay, this one's a painful one. I, I, can, I look at all of you looking a little bit depressed and sad now. No one likes losing money. Uh, one of the behavioral traits we're going to talk about is uh, loss aversion. There's actually a biological reason why we hate losing money, over and above making money. It's a real issue for us, and it's out, we're fighting against our biology. It's a real issue. Now, of course, my simple point on this is just make sure that you've really understood leverage, you're not maximizing on your risk, and if you're feeling stressed and you're losing sleep, drop the risk. If you're trading with 2%, drop it down to 1%. If you're trading with 1%, drop it down to 0.5. And then the last general point, poor money management. Uh, I, think, I think we all have different views on this, but Warren Buffett, again, has an, an interesting one. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Now, the algorithm for doing that, if you're trading on an active basis, only trade 1% to 2% of your trading account. What happens if you're trading with 10% of your trading account, 10% of the capital? What happens? Anyone? Basically, you only have 10 shots in the gun. <laughs> if you get it wrong 10 times, the account's gone. You're a negative equity. No one likes that. You can, no matter how good or bad your strategy is, if there's no more money in the account, you cannot trade. So the idea is to stay alive. Rule number one, stay alive. <laughs> but the best way to stay alive is to make sure you have enough bullets in the gun so that if you maybe have 100 shots, mathematically, you've got more chance of staying alive in order to learn how to increase your performance. And I see this mistake all the time where people go all in, they get really confident, and they bet too big on the risk side and on the account. And it's just, it's, 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 it's sad to see that because from the very first step, you've made the biggest mistake, which is going to cost you the entire account. So be very aware of this. Never lose money, but understand how to never lose money. Now, I'm going to focus on the behavioral mistakes, which overlaps a little bit on what I covered. The first one is anchoring. So if you want to note this down, any of you who have notepads or pieces of paper, please do. I'd like to see people who are actively scribbling away, taking some, some lessons for, for, for the road. Anchoring is all about hanging on to a piece of information. It might be a, a technical information, might be price, might be fundamental. It doesn't matter. The point is you have fixated on a piece of information. That piece of information is everything to you. <laughs> it's, it's the holy grail. Now, if you rely too much on that information, it's called anchoring. One example of that is when we go out to a shop and we get something, let's say you're buying clothes during the, the, the sale season, and it's 50% off. It's really good value. And you decide to hold on to that, that item despite the price changes that might happen thereafter. What's really important to keep in mind is the value that you make is actually what you take at the end, not when you're standing at the window shop staring at the clothes. So one of the things that Warren Buffett again says, and sorry to keep over quoting the same person, price is what you pay, value is what you get. So whatever anchoring you're doing, particularly if you're looking to buy something at good value, whether it's clothes or whether it's a trade, make sure that you're actually getting the value. The market is giving back the profit that you think you were going to make on the basis of value or any other piece of information. Now, another type of anchoring is news, uh, anchoring on news or information, and, and that's something to keep in mind. Finally, mental accounting, uh, when we're actually looking um, at trades and uh, changing the stops in order to save money. Here's an example in the S&P 500, a recent one. The idea is to actually keep uh, the stop level at B, because that's a good technical level. Try not to uh, change it, because you're going to increase your risk. Third, overconfidence. Try not to be this mouse and think that you have this rock-solid helmet of uh, knowledge. Uh, you might think that you're going to get the cheese, but ultimately the mouse trap or the market risk is likely to get you. So be very aware of this. Usually the people that are overconfident are people like me, um, who have studied a lot of knowledge. So if you're a specialist of any sort, that tends to 
uh, take a lot of the, uh, the, the issue. Herd behavior, uh, cryptocurrency is one example of that in terms of the fear of missing out, but I've decided to choose a new example, Apple, uh, something that people really love from a brand perspective, but let's not get brand love mixed up with blind love. Love in life is okay as it is in markets, but it's the blind love which is the real issue. And that blinds us from the risk that we're taking on. And keep in mind, Apple corrected by 40%, which is in line with previous corrections. And ultimately, if we just looked objectively, market timing, risk management, we could maybe have saved ourselves from, from being hit too hard with that. Loss aversion is the final behavioral one that I'm going to um, end on. And that just makes the point that, as I said before, we really feel the pain of, of losing money, and it's part of our biochemistry. We're fighting our own biology. And this chart shows you that the fear of losing money, the pain of losing money, is twice as great as the pleasure of an equal gain. Literally twice as bad. So that's why you're feeling what you're feeling. Now, what I want to tell you is, by the way, the pleasure of making money is also an issue. That is, you can also go through loss aversion, and what that does is produce this chemical, this happy chemical called dopamine, which we get addicted to. So we, that might be a case for profit-taking, just to make sure that we're not getting too greedy or too fearful that we're staying in the trading zone. Quick sample trade here where you decide to go long in a market which is falling, but you saw good value. And in the end, you widened the stop, but by doing so, you made an even bigger loss because the market found a, a lower bottom to make. And then this last one on loss aversion, which I think is an important point. We say let your profits run, cut your losses short. But what we mean by that is you can go through one drawdown, two, three, four, five drawdowns. Suddenly you make good money on the, on the sixth one, down again, down, up. You go through this cycle. But ultimately, I want you to count the number of negative sessions you've gone through, eight. So your win-to-loss ratio is three to eight, and yet, if you managed your losers well, you could have made money. So it's not about being right, and it's not about how many times you get it right. Win-to-loss ratio isn't as important as you think it is. What's more important is how you manage your losers, and then obviously let your profits run. Now I'm just going to... The final part of the presentation is basically the three steps uh, that you can take. So this is something that you should do in order to uh, fix all of the mistakes that I've shown you, general mistakes, but also the behavioral mistakes. First thing, remember, awareness is all, to, all about actually analyzing the mistakes. So keep a journal of your trading mistakes and make sure that you're measuring them each time so that you can actually see how you can fix them. You need to be aware in order to make the change. Second, understand the source. So logical reasons for our trading mistakes is only the tip of the iceberg. It's everything else, the subconscious that controls our decision-making process. The lizard brain, which I've been talking about, is the, is the problem that everyone says. And the reasons are this fight-flight survival instinct that kicks off because of ancient problems that we had in the past of tigers racing after us. But ultimately, the solution which I'm going to leave with you today is circling back to this whole point of peak performance, mind, body, and emotional balance. Now, I'm going to just check on the, on the time just before I, I stop. Okay, so in the remaining few minutes, I'm going to quickly zoom through this. Just remember, mind, emotional balance, and if, if I miss anything out in this section, there's a video that the IG team can maybe share with you later on from the workshop that I did in November which focuses on the rest of this. Also, there's an interview I did at IGTV. You can watch a little bit there, too. On the mind side, this is the exciting stuff that I now want to show you in a very few minutes. Uh, keep in mind this idea of your brain being a muscle. Uh, your biology is not your destiny. The, the DNA that you have in your mind can be changed. It can be improved. And the technical term for that is neuroplasticity. It just basically means that you can train your mind uh, to achieve more. What happens during that time is basically on the, on the chart there, we create certain memories that give us either positive or negative experiences. One negative experience is loss aversion. That creates um, a certain chemical in our mind that makes us more uh, negative. It gets us a little bit depressed, and that can lead to even more loss issues. 
or being positive, if we decide to actually take responsibility, we change the memory of the trade, and that actually changes the circuitry. It actually uploads a new program in our brain, and science is now proving that. The word that they use is synaptic connections. We can actually change the nature of a synaptic connection, and that's what creates the memory, which creates the behavior, which creates the action. Be aware of your personality. Your personality is a personal reality. The problem is most people try and change their reality with the same personality. It doesn't work. You have to become a different person in order to get a different result. And that's why trading is more about who you become and less about how much money you make. I know that's not an exciting statement that I'm making, but keep it in mind. It's more about who you become. And that's why successful traders really become successful in their own right, not just in trading, but other things. Remember your, uh, how you react to wealth? What is your relationship with money? I'll quickly zoom through this and you can uh, review it, things uh, later on. Education, capital, risk. What is your view on any one of these areas? Body is a very simple one. Goes back to the at athletic metaphor. We need to be in that, in that athletic mindset, but also we need to be physically fit because that helps with our energy. The problem as well is the diet. I'm not going to give you diet advice, but most of the traders and investors I speak to have a bad diet. <laughs> It's, it's high-stimulated uh, diet, it's, uh, it's fast food, it's eating at the desk. It imagine, I mean, just ask yourself, what does that do for your mood? How is that going to change the way that you trade? And if you just answer that question personally, you'll know what I mean. Lastly, calming exercise. Remember I said mindfulness is not about the spiritual side of mindfulness. It's just about emptying your mind and just calming yourself down. Emotional balance is... is the final part of this triad, remember I said there were three areas, mind, body, and emotional balance. Keep in mind that the emotional balance is something that can be measured. The idea is coherence. And anytime you get this, you're, you're feeling stressed, and you're feeling anxious, you get this red zigzag mood going on in your body. And this can now be measured. What you want is something more harmonic, something more coherent. Now, this is what creates the cycles in the market that we see. But what I'm having a lot of fun with right now I'm buying new technology where I can go up to people and say, seeing is believing. If you're a little bit cynical and you don't believe anything of what I'm saying or it's a bit too sci-fi for you, you can actually track this. So this new machine here actually allows you to measure your coherence, your heart coherence, how you actually feel from trade to trade. And I'm developing case studies on this just to see uh, what the results show. There are different brain states. You can now measure your brain waves. Believe it or not, I know this sounds really crazy, but the technology's out there. That's what it looks like. Uh, but essentially, you need to move away from the beta problem-solving state, which is the red zigzag, and go down more to the alpha state. There are hedge funds out there who have actually trained their traders to get into that state before they make a trade. You've got to ask yourself, if some of the world's smartest people are doing this, why shouldn't we be learning the same things? The results of being mindfulness have also been tested, and, and they show positive results. It improves the balance in the body. It allows you to get into that trading zone. You can see uh, the results there uh, in both experiments. And different emotions can also be measured if you do psychometric tests. The one you want to avoid is between 20 and 175, so guilt, fear, desire, but anything that leads to that survival state, what you need to do is push yourself up from the 200 level to 350 and above, and that's the peak zone. That's where most successful traders and investors are. That's why they're so calm. That's why they're so good with, with risk and money management, because they've trained themselves to get to that level. A way that you can do that is just do, write a journal, just open a piece of book and write how you feel at the end of each trade, and maybe do some tests, happiness tests or psychometric tests. Okay, I want to end on this last bit, which is I want you actually experiencing a mindful moment. So if I can just ask you just to reduce the distraction. Where do you think most of the distraction is happening? From your eyes. So if I can invite you to close your eyes in a safe space, just relax your arms, focus on your breath, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, some of you may have practiced this already. This might be new for others. Just trust in what you're doing. As you're breathing in, 
Breathe in all the positive energy, all the goals that you're setting yourself as a trader, and as you breathe out, breathe out the mistakes. All the past mistakes that you're really upset about, just breathe it out. If you're getting lots of other thoughts going on in your mind, don't ignore them. Just watch them go by. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. That's right. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm going to hold a minute's silence and then count to five just to bring you back in a safe way so that you can continue with the next session. Five, four, three, two, one. So for those of you who still have your eyes closed, now's the time to open them. <laughs> I think IG would be happier if you had your eyes open <laughs> for the rest of the session. Uh, I'll leave you with this final slide, a, a picture of uh, actually myself, humbly sitting in uh, Neuchâtel, where I used to live for a few years. Some of you who know me uh, know that I used to have the best years of my life in Switzerland, but also in this wonderful canton. And a friend of mine who I didn't know at the time took this picture um, as I was going through my daily meditation and yoga practices. So I leave you with something that I practice uh, as maybe something for you to consider. And if it's too much for you, have a mindful moment with your family, play some sport, uh, find that calmness in your trading and investing life so that you can ultimately improve your success. Thank you very much.